You should understand by now that there are quite a few parameters that create motion blur in your image. So there in fact is no general rule for the appropriate shutter speed. Elaborating on the example of our sprint in the previous movie, shooting the same image with the same shutter speed from the same point of view with a wide angle lens creates less blur than shooting it with a telephoto lens. Check out the previous lesson if you haven't already. In this video, we will give you a ballpark for which shutter speed you need to freeze motion. First, taking pictures of playing kids. A good starting point is a shutter speed of 1 400th. If they are playing tag, you'd rather want to use 1 1000th or even higher. No doubt there is always a chance that you could get the one or the other image sharp with slower shutter speeds. But that's risky. Next scenario is sports. The speed of sports ranges from rather static shooting competitions to extremely fast planes in an air race. But for general sports, the lowest limit to freeze motion is a shutter speed of around 1 1000th. The faster the sports gets, the faster your shutter speed has to be. Especially with sports though, it is not always bad to have motion blur. Sometimes it adds the little extra feel to an image that shows that there is some action. So don't be afraid to play with slower shutter speeds to get some deliberate motion blur. Let's look at animals. Birds. The faster they fly or move their wings, the faster your shutter speed has to be. Here is an example. Not actually wildlife because it was shot in a park and the bird was moving rather slow, but it gives you an idea. Shutter speed was set to 1 500th. If we took a closer look and zoom in, we could see that there is still some motion blur. So 1 1000th or even 1 2000th would have been better. If you want to photograph, for example, hummingbirds, you really need at least 1 4000th to freeze their motion. Another popular subject are running dogs. Again, 1 1000th is a good starting point to freeze the movement. If that still creates blur, go faster. You see, 1 1000th does a pretty good job at freezing motion if it's not too fast. And if it gets faster, just speed up your shutter speed. It's not all that difficult. But why don't we always use the fastest shutter speed available? Mainly because there isn't enough light available, so you're limited in this regard. And another thing is, especially with fast moving subjects, you sometimes want your depth of focus a little wider to make sure your subject is in focus. So you need a smaller aperture, bigger number, and you already know that a smaller aperture will reduce the brightness even more and will force you to use a slower shutter speed in order to correctly expose the image. Our last example for the moment, you're shooting landscapes, cityscapes or a still life. Nothing is really moving, so you don't have to freeze any motion. But can you choose any shutter speed you wish? Well, not exactly. One thing you always have to consider when taking images is you yourself move, because your hand shakes. It's not obvious, but there is always some shake. Take a close look at this image. There is some slight camera shake that blurred the picture. The right shutter speed to avoid camera shake depends on the so-called focal length of your lens. Remember our last movie when we zoomed in on the sprinter and magnified the blur? That's exactly what happens with camera shake. With a larger focal length, we magnify the blur. The only difference is, now you create the blur by shaking, rather than the sprinter by running. Almost all beginners usually use crop sensor cameras. We will deal with sensors later, but for these, a general rule to avoid camera shake is a shutter speed of 1 divided by twice the focal length. So if you use a 100mm lens, you need a minimum of 1 200th shutter speed. If you use a 200mm lens, you will need 1 400th. And with a 50mm lens, 1 100th. And so on, just to avoid motion blur due to camera shake. So far so good, but what can you do to avoid camera shake if your landscape is rather dark 
and you can't achieve these shutter speeds. Many lenses or cameras nowadays have very good built-in stabilizers that help you prevent camera shake. If you have one of them, test its ability by using shutter speeds that are slower. But remember, the image stabilizers can only stabilize your movement. They are not able to stabilize the movement of your subject. How could they? Other options to reduce camera shake are resting your elbows on a table, leaning against a wall, placing your camera on something solid, use a tripod and hardly worry about camera shake at all, or change the ISO, which will be the content of our next movie right after our summary of chapter 2.